In this video, I'm going to cover the effects of government intervention in market. So think about a scenario where the price ceiling on gas would be put into place so that gas would never go over $2 per gallon. So the, if there's a price ceiling at $2 per gallon, the equilibrium price is four, what's gonna happen is there would be a shortage. The quantity demanded here is greater than the quantity supplied, resulting in a shortage. And that policy is not going to help consumers. A price floor is a minimum legal price that a seller can sell a product. The goal is to keep the price high by keeping the price from falling to equilibrium. So what would happen if there was a price floor on corn of $4? The supply would be greater than the demand. So is that gonna help corn producers? So pause the video and see if you can answer these questions. The answer to the first one is D, and the answer to the second one is C. Price controls and efficiency. Are price controls good or bad? To be efficient, a market must maximize consumer and producer surplus. So on this graph, you see the price ceiling. What ends up happening is the quantity demanded is greater than the quantity supplied. So the only less amount's gonna be supplied. And when you compare that to the equilibrium here, where you'd maximize surplus, this triangle here represents a deadweight loss. So the lost consumer and producer surplus. So that results in inefficiency. A price floor would also result in a deadweight loss right here in inefficiency. The quantity supplied is greater than the quantity demanded. Pause the video and see if you can answer these questions correctly. The answer to 18 is B and the answer to 19 is C. Another practice question. And the answer is D. And another one. And the answer is D. For this question, the answer is B. And here's a practice FRQ. And here are the correct responses. A excise tax is a tax on a specific good, sometimes called sin taxes. So taxing things like gasoline, cigarettes, alcohol. So let's say the government sets a $2 per unit tax on cigarettes. What that's going to do is shift the supply curve to the left and the tax is represented here as the difference between equilibrium and where the supply curve is up here at five dollars see if you can answer this question the answer should be d in another practice question the answer should be D. And the answer should be A to this question. Consider this excise tax. Consumers would end up paying seven. Producers would end up receiving four. This area represents the total revenue. This would be consumer surplus after the tax is imposed. This would be the producer surplus after the tax. So to do the calculation, the tax is going to be $3. Total revenue is 60. Tax paid by the consumers would be 40. Tax paid by producers would be 20. Total spending is going to be 140 and the revenue for businesses is 80. Who ends up paying more of the tax 
is going to be determined by elasticity. So if demand is perfectly inelastic, then the tax burden would entirely be paid by consumers. If it's relatively inelastic, consumers would bear most of the burden. If it's unit elastic, it would be shared by consumers and producers equally. If it's relatively elastic, the tax would be mostly on producers. And if it's perfectly elastic, the tax would be paid entirely by producers. So pause the video and see if you can answer these. Who bears? Who's going to end up paying more of the tax? Here's a practice FRQ.